Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about debt financing versus equity funding or equity financing. Okay. When we talk about debt financing, think of it as like getting a mortgage and you can get a mortgage on your house, right? Um, so you're basically going to have to pay monthly payments to pay the bank back. And of course, if you don't pay your mortgage, the bank can seize your house. Okay. That's like debt financing for a person. You can also do debt financing for a business. It's like a mortgage on your business. In other words, you're going to the bank and asking for money to finance your operations or whatever you're doing. You make monthly payments, and of course, they can come after your business if you fail to pay. Okay, That's all debt financing is. Equity funding, and we're going to talk more about this um, sources of equity funding in the next video, but equity funding basically means that you are selling a portion of ownership in your company in exchange for money or some sort of other service or privilege. Okay. Now think about this. With debt financing, if your business goes under, the bank comes after the corporation's assets or the company's assets. And if you're what we call a sole proprietorship, in other words, maybe you have a side business. Um, good example. I have a friend named Brenda. Since she's retired, she has this business where she takes care of people's dogs in her backyard because she deals with a lot of people that travel and stuff. So she basically has a kennel on her property. Okay. So if she were, because she's a sole proprietorship, in other words, for purposes of um, accounting and also from a legal status, her personal wealth and that of her dog kennel business are lumped together. So if she were to get a loan to expand her kennel business and the kennel business went under, the bank could come after her personal assets, her house, her car, the whole uh, shebang, right? So when you, loot, when you fail to pay back your debt, the bank can come after everything. Um, when it comes to equity financing, on the other hand, if you go belly up, you, you go bankrupt, you, you lose you know, the business, well, the people that have invested in you just lose the amount that they invested, they can't really come after you. Almost think of it as like buying stocks. You know, let's say you buy shares of, I don't know, GM, right? Um, and as you know, during the Great Recession, GM went bankrupt. Well, the people that own shares of GM, they just lost the money that they had invested into GM. They couldn't actually go after GM, uh, seize its assets or anything like that. No, that's not the way that works. Uh, so GM didn't really have to pay back its investors because the company went belly up. Okay, although restarted and that's a whole other story for another time. But again, with equity funding, the, own, the investors just lose whatever they've invested. They can't really go after you anymore. Okay, That's the difference. And the steps to either getting debt financing or equity financing, the first thing you've got to do, stomp, 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 this is important. The first thing you've got to do is figure out how much money you need. There's nothing worse than going to a venture capitalist or a bank and say, hey, I need some money. Well, how much money do you need? Uh. I don't know, some. Don't be that guy or girl, okay? Go in there with your spreadsheet and say, I need $150,000. And why do I need $150,000? Because you see on my fancy, fancy spreadsheet, I need you know money for equipment, I need money to pay employees, and I need all of these things, and this is why I can't get this money any other way, okay? So know how much you need, be ready to explain what you need it for and why you can't get that money any other way. That's huge. Okay. Then what you wind up doing is you're going to determine the type of financing. That's what we're going to talk about in just a second. And then you develop your strategy for engaging with investors. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you're doing debt financing or equity financing, you're going to need a business plan. It doesn't matter whether you never come back to that business plan and you never use it again, you need a business plan. Don't know how to write a business plan? Guess where you can find one? I've got a playlist on my channel all about business plans. Check it out. The worst mistake you can do as an entrepreneur, by the way, with business plans, there's a lot of these publicly funded organizations that will write business plans for you. The problem is they may write a business plan that doesn't actually reflect what you're trying to do. Right? So I always recommend that you write your business plan organically. I think that's a better approach. Um, you can pay consultants to write business plans for you and stuff, but again, they're going to write your business plan their way, which may not actually be a reflection of what you're trying to do. Okay, that's huge. So anyhow, so step one, uh, step one, 
figure out how much you need and what you need it for and why you can't get that funding elsewhere. Step two, figure out which kind of financing is appropriate for you. I want to talk about that in just a second. And then three, develop your strategy for actually getting that money. You know, I've got appointments with the bank. I'm doing this pitch competition. You know, I've got my business plan ready to go, etc. Okay, I've got more about that in some other playlists. That's why I'm not talking about it as much here. So let's look at this for a second. If you think your firm falls into these categories. So it's high risk, okay, so your business may or may not succeed, and it has what we call an uncertain or variable return. In other words, we don't know whether you're gonna make money or the returns are so variable. Now, variable, what are you talking about a variable return? Let me give an example. I had a buddy that had a printing press. So he, he printed books and pamphlets and things like that for people. And he used to laugh. He said, you know, it's a good thing I came into that business with plenty of money um, because that had to cover me for the lean times. He said he made almost all of his business in July and August because he was printing textbooks and things for schools. And he made a lot of money in um, kind of part of November when people were getting gifts and things like that and holiday parties. So he'd be making pamphlets and whatnot. And then he made a little bit more money again uh, during the month of December for more textbooks for the second semester. And he said the rest of the year he'd just be sitting by the phone praying that somebody would call. That's what we mean by a variable return. So it's very hard to calculate how much money you're going to make at the end of, you know, during the year because you just get these deluges of orders and then the rest of the year is totally quiet. Okay? Variable return. And again, this is what we call weak or inconsistent cash flow. Again, thinking of my buddy with the uh, printing press. High leverage, okay? Leverage is just a fancy way of saying debt. Le high leverage means that you have a business that would rely on the money that you would borrow, or, the, or you, would, you rely on external fi financing for the majority of your operations. In other words, your business is not making enough money to cover itself right now, okay? Low or average growth. You know, you're not growing that much or it's about average. Now, lower average growth is not always a bad thing, right? So there's a lady that uh, lives nearby me and she has an acupuncture business, okay? She has all the clients she wants. She does not accept new clients. She'd have, and if she did, if she were to accept new clients, she'd have to hire another acupuncturist and then she'd have to start paying, you know, money and, you know, and dealing with the W-2s and all this other stuff. She didn't want to do that. She just wants to be an acupuncturist. So she would actually have what we'd call almost stagnant growth. She has the maximum capacity of clients that she can take and she's happy. So low and average growth is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Inexperienced management. And it's not just a matter of you being inexperienced at what you're doing, but you have very little time working with your management team. Like maybe you've just hired some new people and you're trying to figure out your synergies and stuff like that. This can also mean inexperienced management. Your organization is relatively new, so you don't have a lot of good financial data. You may not even have a minimum viable product. That's what we call an MVP, not most valuable player, minimum viable product. That's kind of like saying a prototype that has developed into a product that's actually being sold right now. So you may not even have that. If that describes you, chances are what you need to do, rely on is the personal financing like we talked about in the previous video. So you're gonna be dipping into savings, using sweat equity, bootstrapping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You are not in the kind of a business that's gonna be appealing to a bank or to investors. And good examples of businesses like this are prosaic enterprises, right? Someone's got a day job and then they've got this hobby on the side or they're trying to start something kind of organically, totally from scratch, and they don't exactly know what they're doing, okay? Let's look over here. Let's say um, you have a business that has low risk and a steady return, okay? So in other words, you're making kind of a predictable amount of money every single month, and the chance of your business going belly up is, is low, okay? Let's say that's you. You've got a strong and consistent cash flow. You can tell people on average every January I make about this amount of money and this every year I make about this amount of money. Okay? You know. You have low leverage. In other words, you might take on some debt, but the normal operations are sufficient 
so that you don't rely on debt for your operations. So let's say you have a mortgage payment of $1,000 a month for your business that you've got to pay back to the bank. It's not really that big of a deal because you're, you know, you're able to, um, your net profits are still like 10,000 a month. So you just pay that $1,000, not a big deal. This is what we mean by the low leverage. Experience management. Not only have you, the entrepreneur, been doing whatever it is you're doing for a while, but you've got a team of people that you've been working with for some time and you guys know how to work together. That's what we mean by experience management. You've got a good balance sheet. You know what's going on, okay? In terms of the finances of your organization, it's very predictable, very safe, and your finances have been audited, so they know you're not doing anything dodgy or you know, possibly fraudulent. If that describes you, probably going to a bank would be a good option. You're probably the kind of organization, because I'm sure some of you are wondering, hey, um, you know, if, that describe, if that's you, why would you even go get a loan? Maybe you need to grow as an organization, you're not able to you know, jump over some sort of a, a hurdle. Maybe you're thinking about starting a new location. You know, all of that could be applicable. But one point that's important that I want to make, um, there are ways to get loans um, even if you don't exactly fall into this category, there are, all the, there are the Small Business Administration uh, guaranteed loans. And so the, the SBA, or Small Business Administration, does work with banks all over the U.S. And basically what the SBA will do is they will help guarantee the loan. Um, the last time I checked, I think they would cover, um, they'd guarantee sometimes up to 75 or 80 percent of the loan. And so that may make a bank more willing to loan to you if you don't fall into this neat category. Okay, so do consider looking into um, the SBA loans. Now, oh, by the way, a lot of people think that the SBA is only viable for small businesses that fall into this category, but if you are getting started up, um, possibly this may be an option for you. Okay, uh, New Ventures can also consider an SBA loan guarantee program. And by the way, an SBA loan guarantee can be used for any legitimate purpose. Uh, for starting and running that business, you know, buying capital, paying employees, just like any other regular loan. All they're doing is guaranteeing the loan. It's like getting a cosigner almost. Okay. Now let's say this, fall, this falls into, this describes your business. You got a business with a high return, okay, so it means that potentially you can make a lot of money. It's a really cool business idea. You're tapping into a new market. It's something that, you know, it's neat. It's fun. People kind of get excited about it has the potential for growing really, really fast because you're tapping into a new market. Okay, niche market, you could potentially be a monopoly within your space. And, the, and it's proven management. Yes, the firm itself may not be around for very long, but you and your fellow managers have worked together a lot. You know each other, you get along, at least professionally. Uh, and that's what we mean by proven management. One venture capitalist said to me, he said, I do not invest in businesses. I invest in people. Proven management. And if that's you, you're probably going to go to equity financing or equity um, funding. Okay? So in the next video, we're going to talk a lot more about equity funding because that's kind of the purpose of this course is entrepreneurial finance. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you post in the comments below. By the way, those of you that are my students that are participating, uh, you know, doing the questions for participation, you may not ask, why did I use blue for... Um, you know, bootstrapping and personal financing, black because, you know, for, bank, for um, debt funding or debt financing, and purple for equity funding or equity financing. Why did I use those three colors? Because I like those colors. That is not a valid question for this assignment. Now, a question for all of you that are, are, are following along, my, my YouTube audience, let me ask you guys something. Where do you think that your business falls in to these categories? Do you have any stories about successes or failures with uh, funding. I always like to collect stories, and if you'd like to share your stories with uh, the greater YouTube community, definitely put those comments below. As always, give me a thumbs up. That's a like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video, which we're going to talk more about equity funding or equity financing.